sunrise and sunset, promise and fulfillment, birth and death. The whole drama of life is written in the sands of time. The American Broadcasting Company presents another in a series of dramatic programs, The Clock. Time and history are closely linked. For history is a series of recorded events which time has endowed with eternal importance. And throughout the course of time and history, the female of the tribe has always been regarded as the weaker sex. I question this theory and submit that there have been great exceptions. Catherine the Great, for example, was hardly the vine clinging type. And I have yet to see a painting of Lucretia Borgia in a Mother Hubbard. Then there was Cleopatra, a woman who knew what she wanted and took what she wanted when she wanted it. And although this willful lady was unaware of it, her namesake and counterpart was produced 2,000 years later. And this second Cleo was to be the final proof that the female of the species is deadlier than the male. I'm a guy who likes to make a fast buck, and I don't care how I make it. I'm tough, see? And I've been around. From Seattle to New Orleans and back to Shy, I got a rep. And I earned it. I earned it with my knuckles. When my knuckles wasn't good enough, I used my knees. I'm big and I'm wide and I'm built like an ox. And there's nothing that walks, runs, or jumps that can make me crawl. Ricky Morgan's the hardest guy you ever met. That's why... I just can't understand it. I first ran into Cleo on the road from San Diego to Tijuana. I had 40 bucks in my pocket and a couple of gallons of gas in my jalopy, just enough to take me across the border and maybe try my luck. She was standing there on the side of the road with my headlights caught her. She didn't move or even wave a thumb. She just waited until I stopped. And the first thing she said to me was, Hello, baby. <laughs> Waiting for a streetcar? Got room in the front for me? Sure. Hop in. What's a kid like you doing on the road at this time of night? Walking. Walking? Walking where? Anywhere. What's your name? Cleo. Mine's Ricky. Ricky Morgan. Maybe you heard of me. Can't say I have. Next time you're in the post office, take a look at the wanted sign. What are you wanted for? Loud talk? <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm not running from a rap. I've done my time twice. Where are you bound for, Ricky? Do you want to? I'm going to roll me a couple of cubes to see if I can put some fat on the bankroll. Tijuana is as good a place as any. I'll ride along. Where are you from, Cleo? No place in particular. And that's where you're going. And that's how it looks. Okay, sister. You can ride along with Ricky. Thanks, baby. She was small, maybe five foot one, and she had hands like a china doll. I'd have given you a saw buck for every pound she weighed that was over a hundred. And if I put my arm around her waist and squeezed her hard, I could have busted her in two like a pencil. But it was her hair that got me. She wore it up in a great big fluffy wave, and my fingers were itching to touch it. What's the matter? Something uh, wrong with the car. Why don't you get out and look at the motor? <laughs> What's my hurry? I got time. Cigarette? I don't smoke. I got a bottle in the back. I don't drink. The gal don't drink and the gal don't smoke. <laughs> what else could I offer by way of making her happy? Start the car, mister. You're wasting your time. Look, sugar, don't hand me that. When I pick up a dame on an empty road at one in the morning... Don't. Touch me, mister. I figure she's looking for company. Don't touch me. What's that you're holding? Against my ear. It's a hat pin. Nine inches long. You figure you got more than nine inches between your eardrums, baby? Hey. Put that gimmick away. Start your motor. And pay attention to your driving, mister. Keep both hands on the wheel. 
<laughs> well, I wasn't really scared. I mean, she never would have driven that hat pin right through my head. But it was getting late, see? And I wanted to make a crap game before the joints closed up in Tijuana. So I kept both hands on the wheel. <laughs> Well, here we are. What kind of a town is this? It's a town that pays off if you know where to put the money. You'll find a small hotel on the end of the street. Maybe you can get a room there for half a buck americano. Where are you going? Into this gambling trap. I'm going to build 40 bucks up to 4,000. What's so long, kid? Keep your curlers on. Good luck. Baby. You know, I forgot to tell you. I'm not only the toughest guy in pants, but I'm also the luckiest. When I handle a dice, I can make him practically sit up and take a bow. Ricky Morgan never loses. Well, almost never. Snake eyes. Collect your bet. I don't know what's wrong with me tonight. That's five craps in a row. You want to pass the dice, senor? Pass the dice. Move over and save me five. <laughs> uh, one and a two. Collect your bet. What's the matter with these cubes? Ain't they got any sense? Place your bet, senor. Okay, my last five. Give me the dice. Maybe. You better let me try, baby. Where did you come from, Cleo? Give me the dice. It's my last five bucks. Hand them over. Seven, senorita. Roll again. Let it lay. Seven. Roll again. Let it lay. Seven. Okay. Roll again. Let it lay. Eleven. Yeah. Roll again. Hey, you won my 40 back. Let it lay. Five minutes later, she'd rolled my fin up to 1,280 bucks. Nine passes in a row, so help me. And then it happened. Fade me for the work. I'm leaving it on the table. Just one moment, senorita. Something bothering you? May I see those dice? What for? They're yours. Let me see them, please. Nothing doing. Give me the cues, honey. You want to see him paint your eyes? Yes. Here. In the car, Cleo. It's parked outside. It took me a couple of minutes to bash my way to the door. When I got there, I thought we were through. But all of a sudden, the mob fell back. They gave us plenty of room. Cleo had taken that hat pin out of her head of hair, and she was holding it like a knife. One guy was on the floor with a hole in his neck, and another guy was grabbing his middle. She'd stuck him like you'd jab a fork into a side of ham. And she was enjoying it just as much. Then two minutes later, we were on our way. And I was juicing my jalopy up to 70. We'll have to go south for a couple of miles and take a chance of crossing the border further east. I can get us across. I know a spot. Holy smoke. No, what's the matter? The dough, the cash we won. I left it on the table. I didn't. I got it here. <laughs> Cleo, I gotta hand it to you. You're smart. Sorry, I lost my dice. Yeah. Best pair I ever had. Loaded them myself. How much dough we got? 1,280? Yeah. Okay. It's 50-50. Split it up, honey. Fair enough. Yeah. You know, you and I ought to make a good team. I like the way you operate. I usually work alone. Look, sister, you got the brains and I got the muscle. Why not make it a combination? Because I don't trust anyone outside of myself. Ah, oh, look, if you're thinking about that pass I made, forget it. This is strictly a business proposition. I'm not worrying about passes. Then why not make it a partnership? Maybe you haven't got nerve enough to work with me, Ricky. What? <laughs> Are you kidding? I'm the toughest guy you ever met, sweetheart. Don't forget it. We make a deal. There's one thing I want you to know. Let's hear it. I don't stand for a cross. What kind of a heel do you think I am? I was crossed once by another guy. He got away with it. Not gonna happen again. What do I want to cross you for? All I want to do is make a deal to our mutual advantage. All right, Ricky. You got a partner. Jack. Now, where do we go from here? New Orleans is as good a place as any. Let's make that our next stop, baby. By the time we got to the Delta, Cleo and me were on better terms. If I say so myself, I ain't hard to look at. Next time I tried putting my arm around her, I used a little more finesse. But the first time I kissed her, I got myself another surprise. You'd think a little baby face down like that would taste like melted butter. But I felt like I was putting my lips against a hunk of dry ice. Well, here we are, honey. Little old New Orleans. 
Way down yards of it, New Orleans, in the land of dreamy things. <laughs> Who is this guy, Sinatra? I'm leaving you here, Ricky. Huh? I mean, for the day. Oh. Where are you going? Shopping. Shopping for what? A sucker. The bar on Charles Street near Canal. Meet me there at 7. Then what? Then I'll tell you our plans for the evening, baby. For a minute, I thought she was giving me the air, but then I knew better. She was nuts about me, wasn't she? And besides, we were doing business together. I moseyed through the old city for most of the afternoon and wound up stuffing myself with shrimp and beer near the levee. Then I hiked back to the bar on Charles and waited for my hat pin honey. Give me a ride, beer chaser. Coming right up. Hello, Ricky. Hello, Cleo. You're a little late. My uh, shopping took some time. Did you find a... a bargain? I got a date with him tonight at eight. In his home. Then what? He's a big shot, some kind of a politician. His wife's up north on vacation. He's a cinch for a shakedown. If we work it right. It's a badger game, huh? Oh. You get down fast. How do you know we'll get away with it? Oh, he'll come across. I'll leave the front door open so you can get in. Don't give him a chance to talk back. Throw the book at him. The old fathead's a pushover. He followed me for half an hour before I let him tumble. He just can't wait to say hello. How much is he good for? Well, it all depends. Maybe a couple of grand if he's got it in the house. And if he won't shell out? Well, then we all just gotta beat it out of him, baby. <laughs> If you give a watchmaker a good movement and a sturdy case, he will produce something handsome for your wrist. If you give a cook a good recipe and the proper ingredients, he will reward you with something tasty for your palate. And if you give a man a predatory woman and a taste for violence, he is in line for a one-way passage to the grave. The house was all alone on the outskirts of the city. I guess that's why the old boy took a chance on asking Cleo up, and Cleo was right. Judging by the layout, the guy had plenty. The door was open when I walked in, and the house was quiet. There was a light on in the back room that turned out to be the library. And as I walked down the hall, I could hear Cleo giving him a line. You must think I'm just awful, Mr. Dingle, coming up here alone like this. Oh, nonsense, Cleo, nonsense. Just treat me like you treat one of your own family. And call me Uncle Ned. Mm -hmm. huh? You must be an awfully important man in New Orleans, Uncle Ned. Well, I'll get by. <laughs> and I can do a lot for a good-looking gal like you, honey. Why, Uncle Ned? Oh, no, 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 no. Don't be afraid of me. I'm, I'm harmless. <laughs> Listen, I wouldn't hurt a single hair of your lovely head. Mm, you're so big and strong, and I'm so weak. Oh, I do wish I'd met you years ago, when you were free. Now, you just forget about my wife, honey. I, I told you she just don't understand me. Oh. Here, now, sit closer, Cleo. Mm -hmm. No reason why we can't get to be a little more friendly, is mm -hmm. it? <laughs> You're such an innocent child, honey. You need someone to look after you. Oh, I feel so safe with you, Uncle Ned. Well, of course. <laughs> You're the distinguished type, like the men in those ads. And you're the clinging type, honey. So you just go right ahead and cling to me. Oh. Right. Now, this is what, where you're what? hanging out. Oh, Ricky. Well, who's that? It's my husband, Mr. Dingo. Your husband? You pot-bellied wolf. You'll come between my wife and me, will you? Oh, don't hurt him, Ricky. Hurt him? I got to have a mind to kill him. No, no, wait a minute, old boy. Now, let you and I talk this thing over. I, I had no idea the girl was married. No? No, and it's all been perfectly innocent, too. Hasn't it, Cleo? Well, hasn't it? And I thought you loved me, Uncle Ned. Loved you? Uncle Ned, huh? Okay, Uncle Ned. Instead of bashing your ears in, I'm going to take you in this tramp to court. No, you can't do that. No? No, you'll ruin me. I've got a reputation to uphold. I've got a family. This is a fine time to think now, of. Now, look, look. We can work this out some way. Yeah, how? Well, well, perhaps uh, a consideration. You think you can steal my wife and then pay me off like you bought yourself a car? No, please. Be reasonable. How much have you got to offer? Well, I... So that's it. You're in on this from the beginning. Stop wasting our time. How much? Well, I... I got $200 in my wallet. Now, take it and leave. 200 bucks. Where do you think you are? In a bargain basement? What have you got in that wall safe over there? Oh, just some personal things. Open it up. Well, well, okay. What is this? A robbery? It ain't robbery, mister. If you think it is, why don't you call a cop? Let's get that safe open. Oh, there. There's nothing in here, as you can see. I'll Watch just... in that tin box. Well, nothing. Take it out. 
Give it to me. Well, here. Here you are. He's right, Cleo. There's nothing in here. Nothing but a couple of thousand bucks. Give me back that box. Give me, give me, I tell you. Do this. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay. He's cold. Come on, Cleo. Let's get him out of here. Wait a minute. If he wakes up, he can identify us. Let's make sure he won't. What are you doing? No. No. Cleo! I couldn't stop. I swear I couldn't. Before I could move, she'd taken that hat pin out of her hair and stuck it in his chest like he was a cushion. What did you kill him for? That was a crazy thing to do. Watch the traffic. We don't want to get picked up now. There'll be an alarm out when they find him. They'll catch up with us, sure. No, they won't. Not if we use our heads. They'll think we try to get out of town in a hurry and they'll cover the roads. But we'll fool them. We'll stay right here until the heat's off. Then we'll lamb. We better separate. What for? Who knows who saw him with you? And who saw us together? We got a better chance if we split apart. Maybe you're right. When and where we meet? Make it a week from now. In that same bar near Canal. All right. Let me off at the corner. Find yourself a hideout and stay there. And for the love of Mike, keep your mouth shut. That goes for both of us. Baby. <laughs> I got myself a two-by-four near the levee and started to sweat it out. The heat was on, but plenty. They already had a lead. Like a dope, Cleo left her gloves in the old guy's apartment. And it was just enough to give the cops a start. The guy was important, too. Even more important than we thought. In two days, they had every dick from New Orleans to Charleston on the lookout. I was living like an animal, jumping every time somebody opened the downstairs door. And I didn't want to take no rap for murder. I didn't want to go to the chair for a punchy Jane. Then one morning, I saw the notice in the paper. The wife was offering $10,000 reward, it said, with no questions asked. Come in, Morgan. Thanks, Lieutenant. The sergeant told me you had information about the Dingle case. Maybe I have. It all depends. Huh? On what? On what kind of a break I get. Well, there's $10,000 in it if it leads to the arrest of the killer. What else is in it? I don't follow you. I don't want to get mixed up in no murder case, Lieutenant. Tell you the truth, I uh, got a little wrecked. Really? Where? L.A., New York, Chicago. But I've been going straight since then, and I don't want no part of this if it means setting myself up for a rap. You'll be protected. How? As soon as we pick up the suspect, you can collect your ten thousand and leave. Uh, there's something else too. What's that? I know the dame that pulled the job. Only I didn't see her on the night she knocked him off. Maybe she'll try to drag me into it to get square. That's happened before. We can deal with it. And then. If I tip you off, I get the dough and I'm free? That's a deal. I'll tell you where to find her. You can pick her up this time, tomorrow night. Okay, so I squealed. So what? The dame wasn't human, was she? She was worse than a rattler on the loose. Besides, I had no choice. If they ever got her, they'd get me. I'd have been held as an accessory to the crime. <laughs> but this way... I used what they call psychology, and it paid off with 10 Gs. Okay, you got it now. Give me the dough and let me leave. Now, just a minute, Ricky. Huh? There's just one thing more you've got to do. What's that? Identify her. You mean, I've got to see her again? That's right. Well, I don't want it. It's not a question of whether you want to or not. What is this, a cross? I said you'd get your money and you'd go free. I'll keep my word. We need an identification. Afraid of her, Ricky? Afraid me? <laughs> you think a uh, hundred pounds of bone and hair can scare me? All right, Sergeant, bring her in. Okay. Hello, baby. Is that the girl? Yeah. yeah that, that's her. She's the one who knocked off Dingle. That's all we wanted to know. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Maybe one of these days I'll return the favor. Baby. Well, I blew town in a hurry and went up north to shy. I read in the papers how they tried her and found her guilty. She was going to get the chair. Meanwhile, I'd found myself a new mama, and I was putting on the dog. 
<laughs> How about another bottle of champagne, Dolly? Love me, Ricky. I'm nuts about you. That goes double, baby. What? I said that goes double, don't baby. Don't call me baby, understand? What's the matter, honey? Just don't use that word. I'm sorry, Ricky. You know Mama wouldn't hurt a sweetie pie. Mama loves her sugar. <laughs> And Mama loves her sugar, sugar, too. Oh, Ricky, I'm wild about you. You just keep saying that, Dolly. It's what I like to hear. Well, what do you know? How'd she ever do it? Who? That thing. It says here in the paper she got away from the New Orleans police. What? Give me that paper. And here it says they think she's headed for Shy. <laughs> Was there, all right. She made a break while they were taking her to the death house. She yanked that hat pin out of her hair and let the matron have it. She was coming to Chicago. She was coming back. For me. That was three weeks ago. Since then, I've been running like a rabbit. Trying to get out of her way. I spotted her twice. Once in Philly and once in New York. I don't know how she keeps up with me. Maybe there are guys who know me who don't mind if they ride on a squealer. Listen, Ricky, I'm getting tired of this. Shut up, Dolly. Ever since we got married, we've been running from place to place like criminals. I'm sick of it. And this is the last straw. Shut up, I said. Why didn't you give me a chance to pack my clothes? She yanked me out of the apartment like the place was on fire. I saw her again. She spotted me in a pool room, and I just had time to get out the back door. People must be ratting on me. They must be tipping her off. Well, this time we're going over the Canadian border, Dolly. They don't know me up there. I'll be safe. Ricky. What's the matter now? I think we're being followed. What? There's another car behind us. Huh? It's been there since we left the outskirts of the city. It's her. It's Cleo. Ricky, be careful. Uh, get away from her this time. Ricky, there's a turn. Let go of my arm. <laughs> I didn't wait to see what happened to Dolly. I crawled out of the wreck and limped into the woods. I ran until I thought my lungs were busting. Then I started to get weak. I had a cut in my leg and both my wrists were swelled up like balloons. They must have been busted because I couldn't use my arms. And I was scared. Scared stiff for the first time in my life. <laughs> scared of a day, ain't that a laugh? Ricky Morgan running away from a frail. For all I know, she's right behind me. And I ain't got no chance of getting away. So I'm doing the one thing I can think of. To get out of her reach. I crawled into a town five minutes ago, one of those small bergs with a jail as big as a closet. But it's still a jail. And right now, it's the only place in the world I could be safe. Sheriff Hawley speaking. I want to put a car through to Chicago. Police headquarters. That's right. Very important. Make it... Wait a minute, operator. Well, what do you want? Look, I ain't got straight enough to explain. Give me a break. You put me in the clink for the night. What? Don't argue with me. Put me away. Go on, bum. Beat it. I got bigger things to do. Look. Look. I'm wanted in shy for larceny. 1943. The Dawson holdup. Now will you put me away? Operator, ring me as soon as that call goes through. All right, mister. This way. Thanks. We've only got one cell, but you shouldn't be too particular. Anyway, I'll have your cellmate out of there and on the way to Shy inside of an hour. Then we'll look into your case, screwball. Now, inside. And behave yourself. The two of you. Sheriff! 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 Cleo. He... He must have picked her up before I came in. Cleo. Standing there looking at me with them poker eyes. I'm too weak to move. My arms are busted. And the hole in my leg feels like a tunnel. She's moving over to me now. 
And her hand's going up to her hair. I know what she's got there. And I also know she's going to use it. But before she does, she's going to look at me and say... Hello, baby. Cervantes has said, There is no remembrance which time does not obliterate, nor pain which death does not put an end to. And perhaps we can add, There is no crime which does not carry its own particular retribution. be heard again next week, same time, same ABC stations. This program was written by Lawrence Clee, directed by Clark Andrews. Music is under the direction of Glenn Osser. Heard on tonight's program were Joe DeSantis as Ricky, Jean Ellen as Cleo. Listen again next week, same time, for The Clock. Now here is a special program note. Mrs. Crosby's son, Bing, begins his brand-new fall series of delightful broadcasts over this ABC station next Wednesday night.